What's up, y'all? This is Hussein Nasser from iGeometry. Today, we will discuss some more ArcGIS server. All right. So, the second one to discuss today, and uh, I wanted to continue touring our manager, the ArcGIS manager, this fabulous tool that allows you to administer your server. This is a really, really fascinating tool. And last time here, look how this becomes big. That's what she said. You see? I don't know. <laughs> I got to reference the pooling touring manager. That doesn't make any sense. I'm going to reference the episode we did when we toured the manager on the pooling section. Sounds like a gym tour. We have a wonderful gym here with pooling section. You can have spas, saunas, anything you want. Come on. Bring your grandmas. Eye geometry. This is how you access your uh, ArcGIS manager. To do that, Still, we don't have a web adapter, so we're hitting the GIS server directly through the internally hosted web server, which is exposed on port 6443. And by default, when you specify that port, the folder is always, always going to be ArcGIS, just like that. See how I've... See how I sound smarter when I speak English? That's right. You specify your password. Password? Oh my god. Alright. Here, we, in the last episode, here, we published by value this service. We explain the difference between publishing by value and publishing by reference, and it is there. All right, so this is publishing by value. So we actually published a geo database with a layer into the server, which moves the data into the server. Very big difference between publishing by reference, which is the preferable. I, I can't say preferable. It's it doesn't matter. There are there are advantages and disadvantages for both. Editing uh, is one of them. Obviously, you have to publish by reference if you want to do editing. Uh, that's even not entirely true, but take my word for it. So, if you want to read, you'll have better performance when you publish by value, right? Because everything is in the server. Your server doesn't have to make a trip to go to the database and execute their queries. It's right there, literally. Right, does that make sense? All right, so today we're going to discuss the processes. What is the difference? What are the processes? Depends where part, what part you are on. It's processes or processes. I don't know. Right, so isolation, recycling, and health check. That's what Trump's trying to nuke. Right there. Too soon? I'm sorry. Okay. Specify isolation settings. So, let's go back. So, what we accessed here is a service. We accessed this particular service, all right? And that service has options. And one of these options is pooling, which we discussed. The other option is process. I'm going to just stop this and show you something really exciting down here, all right? So, when you go to the task manager, you'll find something, some processes here running, which are old, which are called SOCs or ARC SOCs, which is stands for server object containers. I think that's the only socks we have, right? We have four socks, and this guy is one of them. One instance is running, and it is running on God knows which socks. We, I don't think we can know. Good details, can we? 
I think we can actually in debug mode when you debug it can actually see which service but I don't believe we can get uh, I don't know can we even specify columns here columns. I could swear there are more columns than that there you go select columns session ID CPU cycle page pool so it's just Image path, man. I have no idea what's that. Command line, yeah, whatever. I don't know which value, but so you can see the command line, which is that stuff. That's the exe. That's the socks. I'm trying to find some descriptive stuff here, which gives you which which uh, which which package name, maybe. I don't think so. Worth it? Nah, it's not package name. I'm not. I'm sure. I think maybe it's only on the, in the, and while while you're, while doing debugging, I guess user objects maybe. Could be user object. I'm not sure. No, 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 no. Okay. So arc socks. So there are. How many socks? We have three. I swear to God, it was four in a second ago. I don't know what I did. All right, so this is one of them. The tools are probably this is another one running system services publishing. This is one, and the third one, I believe, it is the geometry. Oh, all of them stopped. So there is a third one which can't find. All right, but whatever. Take my word for it. There is another something running that we don't know where. Right. If anyone knows, please leave some description. I think there is like a one hidden service that is required at least. So these are the socks. Like assume you have a three now. If I stopped the server, the service, they will go back to three. I don't know what happened here. So these threes, they should have gone down, but I don't know what happened here exactly. Maybe we had four. I think we had four, and then we somehow went down to three. I believe that's what happened. If you start back, the server, you should get that. There you go. All right. All right, we're not lying. So that's the fourth sock. The fourth sock is actually what we're having here. Each instance is by default its own sock, and you can you can change this, right? So let's let's make this four. Not forty four, dude. Oh man, did I? Oh, seriously. All right. Let's keep this up. All right, so this is four instances, four socks. Make this four, and then save and restart. So this will add three more socks, I believe. So we closed. We go. We back, We went back to three, and then we added four. Ooh, look at that CPUs churning, huh? Mm. So three is always there. We know that a three will always be there. They are system socks, I believe, All right? And four are the ones we just spawned. And again, I don't know which one is. There's no way to to know to differentiate that this sock is for this service or this sock is for this service, right? So we we don't know it here. If there's a way, I'll, I'll pull it up for you. But I. Don't think in debug you can actually see these details, but I don't know why. All right, so make sense. Each instance spawn its own sock, its own process. So that's because we have this isolation set, right? High isolation. All instances when you publish, all services when published, they are by default in high isolation. Right, which means each sock, each instance has its own process. This is obviously this is really good in case 
right? If the that instance executed a query and that query crashed, that sock goes down, right? That's that's fully highly isolated. So that be that sock crash shing doesn't affect the rest of the services, the rest of the instances, right? Because each instance is running on their own sock. This, but that's the good thing. The bad thing, don't say it bad, it costs more memory, obviously, right? Each process needs at least a minimum uh, percentage of memory, right? It, it, it needs to take uh, memory, it needs to allocate processes, it needs to allocate stuff from the CPU, operating system overhead, all these kind of stuff, right? So, the other option to go lo low isolation here, and you can specify, obviously, it makes sense, right? Low isolation means I want more than one instance in one process. Why would you do that? Well, I want to save some memory. That's the only thing I can think of, really. And uh, right, if you want to make inter-process communication, you can avoid that, which is expensive right you can avoid that by putting more than one instance in one process right again the drawback which saves memory right so it's like save slightly memory the overhead of spawning each process right you now have one process which basically is, uh, contain more than one instance right there is an option to how many instances per process obviously let's say four right and let's start what will happen? What do you think will happen? We always have three. So I expect, again, I didn't test that really. Looking at the text manager, I expect there will be one more sock. Right? One more sock. That's it. They don't lie to us. There's one more sock. And that sock have four. And look at the foot footprint. It's almost the same, right? Like, I don't know. Maybe this one is ours. Which there is a way to. Like change the name or something for that particular process so you know by the process id oh there's a something called process id of course of course All right let's stop and restart i'm doing research with you guys here i never actually tried this i know what is the difference between low isolation and high isolation but this is the first time actually i do these kind of things all right six four ah oh, god damn it six four Alright, let's stop it again. Memorize these numbers, guys. <laughs> Memorize. Not bad. So the processes are the out of the box system processes are 652, 6324, and 2344. Okay, these are the system ones. And then I'm gonna spawn another process, low isolated instance with four instances. And let's compare. So, six five two six three two four one six six four. That's ours. That's ours. Two three four four. Correct. Okay. That's ours. That's right. Right there. Same size. Almost like few megabyte extra. Looks how look how much memory you can save with this. You can save memory. You can put a lot if you don't care really if something crashes or you wrote really good service and you have a really good map that you are 100% sure you don't see me on air coding here, right? So you do, you're really sure that, oh, you don't, you're don't you not going to crash your services. So you can put everything like as much as possible in one instance and you'd be good, right? You save a lot of memory. And that's our time for the isolation. I'm actually smoking a tripe jet, so Alexa's gonna. There you go. Oh, no. Just stop it. I put a timer time for 30 minutes, so she's gonna ring any second now. Any second. All right. Recycling shuts down the process and restart it at a regular intervals to help maintain performance and stability. So, you leave your server running, right? Obviously. 
and it has these running instances and we explained what's the difference between running and and process and all these kind of things right so they 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 were running they all the time they're running all these instances are running and after time they all the queries that you execute these become uh, these become objects in this process and the processes will basically increase and increase and increase in memory footprint the footprint of the memory will increase obviously you're you're running stuff right on these processes they are not empty and as you start running and running these processes they increase in size so recycling after 24 hours by default it says okay all right guys Let's take a break here. At 12 a.m., by default again, you can change that. At 12 a.m., it says, okay, who is currently idle? Running and idle, right? Just running. Let's say just running and nobody is currently using it. Alexa, stop. Right, so who is currently running? What, what, uh, what process, what instances are in use? That's very important. This is in use. Which processes are in use? Someone is actually executing something. Running is different than in use, right? Which are processes in use? Leave them alone. Anything that is running and nobody's using it, kill it. Restart the processes. Refresh. Take a shower, right? Put some deodorant on, right? <laughs> Cleaning things up, cleaning things up. That's what that's what it does, right? And the last one is the regular idle instances. After each thirty minutes, idle instances that only applies for data connections, which is basically everything. <laughs> everything is data here. So, like all these, if you leave a connection open, right? There will be the pipes that you used for the connection will become will consume a lot of memory right by the time and then what happens here for idle instances after thirty minutes just pre repair the instances keep them alive but just repair the connections right so check for check for if there is like a if something happened with the connection let's say you executed a query and that query failed and for some reason that closed the connection right to the the connection to the database is closed you cannot execute any more queries however the instance is running so the next person running into this uh instance he will fail because there's no access to the database sorry that data, database closed so that's it alexa stop I don't know why I have two timers. And that's it. Hope that makes sense, guys. Uh, I gotta go check on my tri-tip. And I'm gonna see you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed this one.